In this tutorial, we will learn how to use the NextLab modeling tool. We will build a model of a growing population, which can be used to understand and investigate the phenomenon of exponential growth. But first, what is modeling? In our context, modeling means to build a simulation, a model, to explore and understand scientific phenomena. These can come from various domains, like physics, biology, chemistry, economy, social sciences and many more. Models help us to understand scientific processes and enable us to predict future developments. To do so, models run in cycles. A cycle usually represents what is happening during one unit of time, for example one second, one hour or one year. In a model, the set of important variables and their relations are described in a graphical way, as we will see in this tutorial. The modeling software automatically computes the necessary mathematical calculations from the graphical representation and shows the outcome as graphs. These graphs can then be used as a source for explanations and predictions. A list of typical examples where this approach can be used would include phenomena like the periodic behavior of a predator-prey system, the adoption of new products in marketing, the blood glucose and insulin regulation in the human body, or the decay of radioactive elements in nuclear physics, just to name a few. All those examples have in common that the variables of the model change over time. Other features like spatial distributions or conditional and random behavior are rather difficult to model with this approach. The first model we will build simulates the exponential growth of a population. Let's choose a population of rabbits. We are going to model the population of rabbits and how it is influenced by births and birth rate over time. For our rabbit population, we are interested in the changes from one year to the next. Thus, our cycle size for this model is one year. In our modeling tool, we have three different variable types. Stocks, auxiliaries and constants. Stock variables typically describe the most important variables in a model or simulation. These are the variables that change over time, in our case from one year to the next, and that we want to observe. In the model, we can specify how the stock variables will change over time and which other variables influence the increase or decrease of these variables. Besides stock variables, we have auxiliary variables and constants. Auxiliary variables alter the stock variables. Constants are used to define parameters that influence the model but do never change themselves. In our case, the changing stock variable would be the population of rabbits. But let's start from scratch. When we start the modeling tool or erase the current model, we see a large empty working area and two toolbars, one at the top and one to the left. In the top toolbar, you have access to a button to erase the complete model or to access a help text whereas the left toolbar holds the different elements you need to create a model, like variables and relations. We start to create a model by dragging a blue rectangular shaped stock variable from the left toolbar to somewhere into the empty modeling space. In our case, when we want to model the growth of a rabbit population, this stock variable holds the number of rabbits in our population. So we should rename this variable to rabbits and give it a starting value, let's say 1000. We can do so by double-clicking the stock variable and then changing the details in the pop-up dialog. Now, when we want the rabbits variable to change over time, we need to have another variable that flows into the rabbits variable. This variable represents the source of the increase of the rabbits variable. To do so, we create another stock by dragging and dropping it from the left toolbar into the model space. Then, we activate the link mode by pressing the arrow button in the left toolbar and drag an arrow from the new stock variable to our rabbits variable. This first part of our model now means that in a simulation over time, the values from stock will be tra transferred into rabbits, meaning that stock will decrease and rabbits will increase over time. 
However, in this model we don't care where the rabbits are coming from and we can indicate this by setting the stock variable to be anonymous. We can do this by checking the according checkbox in the stock settings. The stock variable now looks like a cloud. At this moment we have not yet defined how much will flow into our variable rabbits. The small icon in the center of the arrow represents something like a valve that can be opened or closed to specify the amount that flows through. To do so, we create and connect another variable to that valve. We create an auxiliary variable by dragging the red circle from the left toolbar into the model space and connect it to the valve by activating the link mode and drag an arrow from the red aux variable to the valve. AUX is short term for auxiliary and describes variables that can be used to do calculations in the model and which typically specify the flow between two stock variables. Now we open the settings dialog of AUX and give this variable the name births and set the expression, which is a short mathematical, mathematical formula describing the change inflicted by the AUX variable to 10. This means that in every cycle of the simulation, 10 will be added to our rabbits variable. If we go to the graph tab, we already can see how our model behaves over time. When you hover with the mouse over the graphs, you can see that for example, at time 20, we have 1,200 rabbits. However, our model of the development of a rabbit population is not quite accurate. In reality, there would be not exactly 10 new rabbits per simulation cycle, but the number of births is depending on the current population of rabbits. This means if your rabbit, rabbit population is small, for example 10 rabbits, you would only have a low number of births for example, only one new rabbit. Whereas if your rabbit population is large, for example, 5,000 rabbits, you would have a larger number of births, for example, 500 new rabbits. That means the number of births is influenced by the size of the population itself. In our model, we can express this by drawing a link from the variable rabbits to the variable births. In the settings for births, we can now see a red border around the expression field. And when you hover over the question mark, you can see that our tool is complaining that the newly linked variable is not used. When we change the expression to rabbits times 0.1, the border becomes green, which means that everything is fine again. The expression rabbits times 0.1 now means that in every simulation cycle the number of births is 10% of the current rabbit population. When we go to the graph tab we can see how this now develops over time. We can see that the rabbit population now shows indeed an exponential growth. Finally, we can be more explicit and make the birth rate more visible as an important factor in our model. Currently, we have the birth rate specified implicitly in the expression of the births, namely rabbits times 0.1. But we can also specify the birth rate in an external constant. To do so, we create a new constant by dragging a green const diamond from the left side toolbar into the modeling area. We change its name to birth rate and its value to 0.1 and then link it to the birth variable. Now we need to change the expression of births to rabbits times birth rate to make use of the new constant.
we can now easily change the value of the birth rate and have a look of its influence in the graph. Finally, and to conclude this tutorial, let's have a look at the third tab called Equations. Here you can see a set of mathematical expressions that the modeling tool has generated to calculate the simulation. These expressions automatically change when you modify the model.